immigration policy. Recently, immigration has been discussed prominently, and one speaker in particular has been haughty in his discussions, displaying a hubris uncalled for in our civilized democracy. <coughs> but enough about President Obama. <coughs> Mr. Timer, please put 10 to 12 minutes on the clock. This is not a manual speech. It is. It is a manual speech. Favor Democrats. And that's not difficult to understand because 71% of them are on some type of welfare or they're collecting uh, payments for being disabled or they're getting Section 8 or they're getting a variety of other <coughs> programs from the government. Of the illegal aliens, 71% are on public assistance. 60% is for immigrants both legal and illegal. And 40% is the average for America. If you took a cross-section of 10 people, four of them would be on some type of public assistance. If it's not welfare, if it's not workers' comp, then they're retired. They're just getting money from Social Security. Does anyone here know what the length is of the Mexican border? 1,900 miles. Yeah. Very good. 1,954 miles. They've tried to estimate what it's going to cost to actually build a fence along the border. The estimates have been from $1 million to $7 million per mile. If it were $7 million per mile, it would be $14 billion to build a wall across the entire border. It would be a double-walled fence with a road right in between where the Border Patrol can drive up and down and try and arrest those who are trying to illegally break our borders. Fourteen billion. Now let's compare that with how much our deficit is. In the last eight years that President Obama has been running our country, we've added nine billion dollars onto the deficit. If you divide nine billion dollars by the cost of building that fourteen billion dollar wall, it's a multiple over six hundred times. We have spent more than 600 times the cost of building a wall on all of our anti-poverty programs for the last seven years, and we couldn't manage to spend any of it to actually build a wall. We've spent 600 times more than the cost of building a wall on everything else, but not the wall. In fact, we even had a law in 2006 that mandated we were supposed to build the law. The Republicans forced through as part of the anti-poverty programs in 2006 a law that said, build the wall. It's nine years later. The wall has been built on about one-third of that length of, of 1,956 miles. And the rest of it is still open. Now, there's some people who have said, well, it's not technologically feasible for us to build this wall. Well, does anyone know how long the Great Wall of China is? The Great Wall of China is 13,173 miles long. It's 6.7 times as long. It was built 2,000 years ago by the Chinese, and it's much more than just two fences with a road through the middle. Have you guys seen it? On, I'm sure you've seen it. It looks like a fort. So if the Chinese 2,000 years ago could build a wall 6.7 times longer, why haven't we been able to do it on our border? Well, I'm going to answer that. In 1996, there was a welfare reform bill that barred welfare to illegal immigrants. Have you guys heard about the welfare bill that was signed by Bill Clinton in 1996 and how great it was for the country and how our deficit actually stopped going up and stayed the same. The biggest part of the savings of that welfare reform bill was ending payments to illegal immigrants. It banned all welfare payments to illegal immigrants for five years. The best the Republicans could get out of that bill and the best they could get President Clinton at the time to sign was a five-year moratorium on welfare payments to illegal aliens. Why are we paying welfare to illegal aliens at all? Why was it only for five years? The answer to all of these questions is that 
we have some compassion in this country for illegal aliens. And the compassion is run amok. The compassion is way out of line with a sense of justice. There are over 100 cities right now in 33 states that have sanctuary laws. And those sanctuary laws acknowledge the fact that if we convict an illegal alien of a crime, we're supposed to report them to the INS. And if we report them to the INS, the INS will deport them. So they don't report them to the INS anymore. They let them go. And if it's so frustrating when they let them go, or they even ship them across the border and they come back across, we have to have an approach to the situation that solves the problem. We need to have the fence. We need to have the fence so that when we send them across, they stay there. That's the least that we can do. There's some people who are pretty excited about the fact that when the immigrants come to this country, they immediately jump onto our welfare. As I mentioned before, 71% of illegals and 60% of immigrants in general are in public assistance versus 40% of those nationally born. And there's actually some people who brag and say, well, it's only 20%. This is like the equivalent of me coming and bragging to you guys about my new car and telling you that every time I put the car, the ignition, the key into the ignition, it blows up into a fireball only 20% of the time. Wouldn't really be something to brag about, would it? But you say, what could we do? Well, I'll tell you what they do in other countries. The second time that Obama was elected our president, I was so depressed, I looked at the immigration laws for moving to Australia. I know a little bit about the immigration laws of moving to Australia. First of all, I'm almost to the point where they don't want me. If I'm over 50 years old, I don't get to go. They don't want people to go and retire in Australia that haven't been paying for 20 or 30 years into their system of taxes. Here in America, you can come here whenever you want as long as you're related to somebody who's already here. Another thing, they don't want me in Australia, not only because of my age almost being disqualifying, but also because I'm not in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. Those are the professions that they encourage for people to immigrate into Australia. And if you don't have one of those skill sets, you have to be sponsored by a company that's already there. You have to have a job. You have to have a job offer and you have to have a job acceptance, and it has to be for longer than just a temporary basis. Imagine that. Other countries only want you to come join them if you're going to be paying taxes, if you have a job, if you're not immediately going to go on welfare or go into Social Security or go on any of the other programs that cost them money. Why do we not have that in America? Because Ted Kennedy in 1965 had an immigration reform bill that got rid of that criteria. He said it wasn't fair. We weren't being compassionate enough to our fellow man. So in the sake of compassion, now we invite anybody who happens to have a relative in this country to come in here, whether they can get a job or want to get a job. And as a result, 71% immediately go on welfare because their relatives have been here, they've learned the system, they know how to game it, and they can teach all of their friends and neighbors from whatever village they came from exactly how to fill all the paperwork out to get the maximum possible benefits. How is that helping America? It's not. Now there's some people who have criticized us for using the term anchor babies. Essentially what happens is if you come here and you give birth, you're then entitled to a whole bunch of new welfare programs because your child immediately becomes a United States citizen. Now this was not the case before 1982. We've had the 14th Amendment ever since 19, or 1865. But in 1982, we had a justice, William Brennan, who decided in a footnote that the 14th Amendment said, anyone born in this country immediately becomes a citizen. Now I'm gonna to read to you exactly what that 14th Amendment says. I have to get my glasses. You know the worst thing about glasses? I can no longer drive and read at the same time. <laughs> you know, this just doesn't work as I'm trying to steer with my foot. This is what the 14th Amendment says. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction of are citizens of the U.S. and of the state where they reside. 
and subject to the jurisdiction of. That's why foreigners come visit us all the time and don't immediately become U.S. citizens. And if they had a baby, they didn't become U.S. citizens either until 1982 when he misread what that meant and said, oh, well, now if they're born here, they're, they're no longer subject to the jurisdiction of the country where they came from. Prior to 1982, everyone took the reasonable point of view, which is until you become a citizen, you're a citizen of wherever you came from. The whole point of getting citizenship, just like a, a inviting you to this club, is that now you're a member of a different organization. Before you were a non-member, now you're one. Until you go through that entrance exam, until you qualify, until they invite you, you're not part of it. William Brennan changed that. Now, there's some people who say that we have to change the 14th Amendment in order to take babies and, and the people who give birth to them and have them leave the country. If that's the case, then maybe we should get rid of the 14th Amendment. You've heard my speeches about the type of stuff the 14th Amendment has been willing to justify. Because later on in the 14th Amendment, it talks about due process of law. You cannot take liberty from someone without due process. That due process provision has been used to justify getting rid of voluntary prayer in our schools. It's been used to justify abortion. And it's been used to justify redefining marriage. All of those cases relied upon the 14th Amendment. And now the people who can't find anywhere in the Constitution what they want to find resort to that clause to justify, oh, well, we want to keep the illegal aliens in our country that are breaking our law. I read an article this morning about it. They're no longer allowed to be called illegal immigrants. Mm. They're unauthorized immigrants. Yeah. As if someday they're going to be legal. Did you guys know that when you drive 80 miles per hour on the speedway, you are no longer driving illegally? You are just driving unauthorized? Someday they're going to give you permission to drive 80 miles per hour in a 65 mile per hour zone. Were you aware of that? I don't think so. In 2003, 70% of 2,300 babies born in Stockton General Maternity Ward were anchor babies. Does anyone know what happened in 2000? In 13 in Stockton, whole city went bankrupt. What is the actual cost for illegal immigrants being on our welfare and being and getting all of these services? Heritage Foundation has estimated a total loss of $14,387 per year for each of those illegal families. Now I look around this room and I see a couple people who are still working, and my portion of that would be $2,400. Your portion of that would be $2,400. That's how much we pay in taxes for those illegal immigrants. You and I are each paying per year $2,400 to fund their lifestyle. A lifestyle that's not using the welfare net as a trampoline between jobs. They're using the welfare net as a hammock to sit there as long as possible and continue to vote for Democrats to keep the benefits coming. Now that's a lot of money for you. That's a lot of money for me. But it's not as much, it's not as much of a hardship as Jamil Shaw paid. Jamil Shaw paid with the life of his son. Mr. Timer, would you give us a minute, please? 